everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. So in this video I'm going to be going through exam questions to show you the sorts of things I'd be doing to prepare for a test on respiration. All of these questions I have created myself based on my 15 years plus of teaching experience because AQA don't actually allow you to share any of their content online. So we can't do a past paper walkthrough, but I can create my own questions, which are along the same sorts of style and lines, which also means you will never have done these before. And let's have a go together. So get yourself a paper, calculator, pen, and let's get into it. And if you do want more help, gain access to exam questions that you never would have done before, then definitely check out my A stroke A star exam technique booklet of exam questions, which I'll link in the description below. So we begin with a two marker knowledge question we've got acetyl coenzyme a is made in the link reaction and we have to describe how so i'm basically just going to describe the link reaction because that's how we create this acetyl coenzyme a and the first thing i'm going to say is that carbon dioxide is removed from the pyruvate but you also have a hydrogen that is removed from the pyruvate that's picked up by nad to create nadh or reduced nad that creates acetate and it's the acetate that combines with coenzyme A to make our acetyl coenzyme A. So those would be the marks that I would say for those two that we need to have. And if we have a look then at the mark scheme, oxidation of or hydrogen removed from pyruvate and carbon dioxide is released. So that is our first mark. Those two statements were combined as one mark. There wasn't a mark for saying it forms acetate. But there is a mark for talking about how the acetate combines with coenzyme A. Although you didn't even have to mention it's acetate, it's just coenzyme A is added. We then go on to this six marker knowledge question still. And we're asked to describe how ATP is made. But specifically, we're told first of all ATP is required for metabolic processes. ATP is made in the mitochondria. Describe how. Now, ATP isn't just made in the mitochondria. It is actually made in the cytoplasm as well. But what this question is specifically focusing on is how is the ATP made in the mitochondria? So that means you can only talk about the link reaction, the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. We can't talk about glycolysis because that happens in the cytoplasm, not in the mitochondria. So the first thing I'm going to consider then is the fact that in the Krebs cycle, some ATP is made. So you get one molecule of ATP being made for every turn of the Krebs cycle. Most of the ATP is made in oxidative phosphorylation, and that is due to the reduced coenzymes. So I'm going to then give marks about the production of the reduced coenzymes. So reduced NAD and reduced FAD are made in the Krebs cycle. You could actually also add here that reduced NAD is also made in the link reaction. Then I'm going to go through what is the relevance of the production of those reduced coenzymes. And it's because when you get to oxidated phosphorylation, the hydrogen ions on the electrons are released from those reduced coenzymes. And then I'm going to go into what those protons and electrons actually do to result in the production of ATP. So the electrons are going to pass along the electron transport chain. As they do that, they release energy. And that energy is used to pump the hydrogen ions from the mitochondria matrix into the intermembrane space. That then creates that electrochemical gradient so that the protons move back down that gradient through ATP synthase. And that is what enables ADP and PI to combine to form ATP. Those would be the different points that I would give for that question. And let's check then. For mark number one, substrate level phosphorylation or ATP produced in the Krebs cycle. So we did have that one. Krebs cycle or link reaction produces reduced coenzymes, reduced NAD or reduced FAD. So that was the second point. Electrons released from reduced coenzymes. So that was part of that sentence. Electrons pass through electron transport chain, which we've got here. Energy is released. Then it actually jumps to the next mark, ADP and PI, which I put right at the end. And then we've got protons move into the intermembrane space and the use of ATP synthase. So that would be six marks. We're now moving on to a practical question. And most of the practical questions for respiration do revolve around respirometers. And that links to required practical nine for AQA. So the respirometer below was set up for 24 hours. 
to measure the rate of aerobic respiration in seeds. So the setup that we have is a sealed chamber. The seeds have been held up in this wire gauze. We just have space here for air. At the bottom, there's a liquid, potassium hydroxide solution to absorb any carbon dioxide. And then we have colored liquid in this thin capillary tube and this graduated scale, which is basically like a ruler. So we're told that throughout that 24 hour period, the colored liquid moved to the left. Explain why. This is such a common question. If you get a question with respirometers, you're always gonna be asked to explain why the liquid moves one way or the other, or maybe you'll be asked to predict which way it would move and give a reason. And it's a standard set marks for this one. So this is aerobic respiration. So that means oxygen is being taken in from this air into the seeds as they are respiring aerobically. The carbon dioxide that they produce in aerobic respiration it's going to be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide and therefore it's not in that space, that air. So that means the gases are going in and also being absorbed by the liquid. So the volume of gas in that tube is going to decrease. And if you have less gas in the same space, that means the pressure will also decrease. And that is what causes the colored liquid to move towards that chamber, which is towards the left. And if we have a look at the marks for that, we've got oxygen is taken up by the seeds, carbon dioxide is produced or absorbed by that liquid, and you get a decrease in pressure or volume. So that would cover all of those three marks. It's also really common that you get maths questions linked to this because you could be asked to work out the rate of respiration based on how quickly that colored liquid is moving. And that's similar to what we've got here. The student calculated that during the 24 hours, 6.2 times 10 to the minus four centimeters cubed of oxygen was absorbed by 30 grams of seeds. So you then need to calculate the oxygen uptake in centimeters cubed per gram per hour. So they've already given us the volume, which is centimeters cubed. To do it per gram per hour, we'd need to then divide the volume by the mass and by time. We don't naturally need to convert any units because it's all the same units throughout. So we just need to put input those values. So it'd be 6.2 times 10 to the minus four as our volume, divided by the mass, which is 30, and divided by the time, which is 24, and that comes to 8.61 times 10 to the minus seven. So there we have it. That is a selection of knowledge and practical and maths-based questions that you could get coming up on respiration. So I hope that helps you with your revision and understanding this topic. If you found this type of video answering exam questions helpful, then why not try this one here that I've got on cells next.